When my marriage broke up, my natural instinct was to go and, you know, to save it. There's something in the air tonight, and for singer-songwriter extraordinaire Phil Collins, that something is called heartache. And to think all this drama started with an incredible estate shrouded in a lush tangle of tropical foliage. I'm talking about Phil's 1.2 acre Miami, Florida spread with its more than 11,000 square footage, a mansion that was once owned by another pop music icon in JLo. JLo's time in this gorgeous residence might have been short lived, but she sure did make a killing on this sale regardless. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. <laughs> After originally buying the home for a cool $4.4 million, she made a massive profit when she then offloaded it in 2005 for $13.9 million. The property would then be owned for the next decade by business developer Mark Gaynor, who sold the home to Phil in 2015 for an even more astounding $33 million. If only Phil could have foreseen what was about to come his way as a result of owning the place. But hey, before we get into all that, let's take a look at the details of this stunning home. Originally constructed in 1929, this nearly century old mansion has been continuously updated and renovated over the decades in an attempt to keep its Spanish and Italian influences shining through strongly. An ornate wrought iron gate opens up to a forest of coconut palm trees, making for a scenic drive up to the Dominican coral stone paved motor court. A few feet away from the front of the residence, there's a meditative garden that boasts a 6,000 gallon koi pond, as well as a great sweep of lawn perfect for relaxing under the shade. Inside, you'll find 150 year old reclaimed hardwood floors accenting a two story rotunda that's been topped by some arched wooden beams and a massive skylight. In the sprawling formal living room, there are dark tiled floors and arched windows, while the nearby dining room is separated from this area with the use of a few square columns. Now, if you're looking for something a little less formal, you can head on over to the family room with the plush leather sofas that offer plenty of pillows and some eye-catching drapes that cover a trio of floor-to-ceiling arched windows. Then there's the attached kitchen, which is super elegant thanks to its white marble countertops and expensively equipped chef grade appliances that include a gigantic imported range. Spread throughout the home are the estate's six bedrooms as well as its eight and a half baths highlighted by Phil's former master suite, which has been decked out in a neutral color palette that complements views of the nearby water. The room's floor to ceiling glass doors further open to a huge terrace. Other exciting amenities are said to include elevator access throughout and a wine cellar that's beyond huge. I'm talking enough room for somewhere around 800 bottles. Last but not least, there's the property's backyard, a vast expanse of coral stone terraces sprinkled with palm trees and a rectangular swimming pool, as well as other recreational perks. These include an open air poolside pavilion with an outdoor kitchen. A little further out, that simplicity gives way to a thick strip of lawn and 180 feet of waterfront with mesmerizing views of the sun as it sets behind the downtown skyline across Biscayne Bay. Sounds like paradise, right? So then why did it turn into such an absolute nightmare for Phil Collins to live here? That is what we're diving into next. In 1999, Phil Collins was married for the third time to Swiss-born jewelry designer Oriane Sive. Afterwards, the couple had two kids before they wound up getting divorced in 2008, and Sive was awarded a then record-breaking cash settlement of nearly $47 million. But sometimes, life has a way of throwing a curveball at you because this wouldn't be the end of their story. Not by a long shot. After Sive was married and divorced a second time, she and Collins reunited in 2016, about a year after Collins had dropped 33 million on that Miami mansion. Much like before, the relationship, well, it wouldn't last. This time, things ended for good when Phil discovered that Sive had secretly married a 31-year-old man named Thomas Bates in Las Vegas. 
As you might imagine, Phil's relationship with Sive soured once more upon learning this. Collins moved out while Sive moved her new husband into Phil's Miami estate. That's when things got really messy. After discovering that his ex has turned his former home into a love nest, Collins decided to sell the property, but ran into a roadblock while doing so when Sive insisted that he had promised her a 50% stake in the North Bay Road residence. Collins then filed suit against Sive and her new husband, alleging unlawful detainer and forcible entry. Also claimed that she had changed the security codes, covered up the home surveillance cameras, and hired armed guards to patrol the property and ensure that a listing agency Phil hired to sell the home couldn't enter. In her counterclaim, Sive would refer to Collins' accusations as manufactured and an attempt at disinformation. The only accusation she would cop to was the security cameras, but she justified her actions by alleging that Collins had installed 20 secret devices around the home to spy on her, including in her bathroom and changing room. She then demanded that Collins honor the commitments he had made to her when they moved in together in 2016. But Collins refused. He remained set on selling the home and demanded that Sive and her new hubby depart the premises, giving her six weeks to do so. Sive's lawyer would inform Phil that six weeks wasn't enough time so Collins offered an extended deadline that kept getting pushed back the more his former wife refused to leave. In an attempt to stop Phil from selling the home once and for all, Sive would submit a fresh court filing that provided some truly sensational information on their relationship, but this decision would end up resulting in her downfall. When Orianne resumed hostilities with her ex-husband, she came in hot with some headline-making claims. For starters, she portrayed Collins as a washed-up husband who turned to booze and painkillers when his vocal abilities began to slowly diminish. And she definitely didn't stop there. She also alleged that Collins was often drunk by mid-morning and that he'd fall over and injure himself regularly before checking himself into hospitals under an alias. I mean, I'm not sure what kind of alias someone as famous as Phil Collins could use and get away with, but his ex might have been desperate. Then she went for the kill shot. Another part of her filing read, by 2019, Phil was incapable of having sex. He stopped showering, brushing his teeth, and dressing properly. In fact, he did not shower or brush his teeth from 2019 until August of 2020 when he vacated the property. Well, <laughs> Orianne would even state that she could smell Colin's stench from other rooms in the house and that he withdrew so far into himself that he became incapable of caring for his children or for her. Instead of facing his problems head on, she accused Phil of running off to Switzerland and only telling her of his decision through a text message. Well, the judge presiding over the case would throw out Orient's counterclaim and tell her to drop the quote unquote scandalous hygiene accusations. He then ordered that the both of them work out their property disputes amongst themselves over Zoom instead of dragging it through the court system. Despite the back and forth, it seems that Phil and Orianne were able to do that. As a result of a partial settlement of Colin's original lawsuits, Sive agreed to vacate. Then, after originally listing the home for $40 million in December 2020, equity billionaire Orlando Bravo would agree to pay $39 million for the estates in January 2021. Soon after, Sive and Bates would depart. As for why Orianne lost her settlement to begin with, well, she was found to be lying under oath by the judge who then dismissed her lawsuit or releasing a full order of dismissal, part of which read, Sive has been purposefully deceptive during the course of these proceedings, including without limitation by testifying falsely under oath to this court. He'd also go on to claim that Sive had made 10 separate violations of the court's orders, one example of which were certain financial documents from a Swiss bank account that she claimed existed and would prove her case, only to never produce these documents when it was requested that she do so. Since all of this went down two years ago, Phil is reportedly retired to his home in Fecky, Switzerland. Not a whole lot is known about this property, but Phil originally bought it in 2008 after moving on from Orianne the very first time they split. As for his former Miami mega mansion, well, that story doesn't have a happy ending either. As it turns out, Orlando Bravo has planned
plans for that stretch of real estate. And it starts with replacing the existing mansion with a brand new home. According to Blueprints, Orlando is in the midst of turning Phil's former home into a more modern style abode with a tropical garden and five bedrooms, five baths, a formal living room, family room, dining room, movie theater, and a wet bar. All right, everyone, that's gonna bring the very messy story of Phil Collins' Miami Beach mansion to a close. But before you head out, answer me this one question. If you were ending a relationship, would you be willing to move out of a house that was technically yours? Or would you force your partner to be the one to leave? Let me know your answers in the comments below as well as what you thought of the mansion altogether. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat further, and I will see you all on the next tour. Bye.